8.5 million revenue business as their first deal. It was a good company, they just wanted to retire. So I would like to introduce you to Tim who with his dad bought an 8.5 million revenue business with 1.35 million EBITDA, as, so pre-tax profit, as their first deal. And that alone deserves a round of applause. Well, welcome, welcome to Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being here. Just tell us what the business does. We bought a group of four companies, all owned by the same people, um, that is in construction, so they do like mechanical, electrical engineering, all commercial stuff, facilities management, they do a bit of fire and, and whatnot. Explain to everyone how that works in terms of the way you've split the responsibilities. Okay. All my skills and expertise was deal making, structuring, I've got experience of pushing deals through legals. We used to you know, buy portfolios on lease options, so we'd structure them over five, seven years. That was our core business. What we do now is pretty much the same thing, except instead of properties, it's businesses. My job is on completion, I'll go and meet all the customers, all the suppliers within a week or two, and then it gets handed over to Rob, and I'm completely out of the picture. And let's talk a little bit about deal flow, because okay. that, so what you were doing back then, what you've done and what you're doing, because what I've always admired about your approach is that you've got the mindset absolutely right about how deal flow is meant to work and how those initial conversations with owners work. Sure. And even when we were having a discussion about this yesterday in the group mm. yesterday, um, you came out with some lovely, lovely things that you say. Right. So let, let's talk about that for a few moments. We, we came from a space of, we started doing 1,000 letter drops. And we just thought, well, we'll just do a deal, see what happens, you know, and, and go from there. It could be anything, it doesn't really matter. It feels like most businesses are almost exactly the same. They're just selling different things or a slight different structure or whatever. So we just adopted, we'll just do anything and everything and see what lands and then go from there. And I thought, the worse I mess it up, it's a bigger chance I'm never going to speak to that person again. So it doesn't really matter. You know, the, the wor it's, it's the ones where you're nearly there and you're like, oh, that was annoying, sort of thing. It, it, it's, so from that mindset, don't be nervous about going and just do it. And if you mess it up really, really badly, Great, you're never going to see him again anyway. Because you messed it up so badly. Do you know what I mean? So don't be afraid. That, that, that's, what I would, that's what I would say. Buying a business is just so rewarding. And I've put together a free training showing you exactly how I do it. If you look in the video description below this video, there is a link. You click the link, you're taken through to the training, watch the training, and I'll show you exactly how to buy a business successfully. We ended up in a heads of terms. You were saying about how quickly it happened. It was something like, we could tell they were motivated. We had the initial call on the Monday, or it was like Monday. We had all the information we needed by Tuesday. Heads of terms were signed a week later. It's hugely motivated. Like it was a really, it was a good company. They, were just, they just wanted to retire. And am I right in saying that the price that they wanted to the price that you agreed was quite substantially different? They opened with 3 million, which when you think about it, a company that's doing 1.35, it doesn't actually sound that crazy. We obviously knew what we could fund, etc. I think we could afford to give them 2.4 or something like that. That's roughly where we said, oh, that sort of sits. sits about what we want. It was roughly about two times, two times a bit dark. And we ended up at 1.8. Which was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. So what do you put that down to? I've always learned with, like, negotiation, and, 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 and I used to work with a guy called Paul who was brilliant and taught me. He said, every time they ask for something, take something. And, for example, when, I, I remember saying this, so when they said three million, I said, oh, I'm just going to, you know, you're saying, like, I said, I'm just going to stop you right there. I know we've just sat down for this call, but if you're expecting three million, no chance. You have to come down, otherwise we might as well not carry on. That was almost my open. It was like, hi guys, nice to speak to you again. If you come with that figure, let, let's, just, let's just call it. It's, it's just a waste of everyone's time. And I said that to them on the phone. And then the next question I asked, they said, oh, well, what are you thinking? I said, well, it's not for me to decide what you want to sell your business at. I said, you, you've probably got a figure you want. You've just told me it. You're not getting that. What is the lowest figure you would accept? What is the absolute lowest figure you would accept? And let's start from there. So then he said, 2.4. I said, oh, no, no, not doing that either. We ended up agreeing at 2.1 on the price. And then he started, then we, when we you know, I compartmentalised the negotiations. We've agreed broadly at the price. And then we got stuck into terms. I said, well, we can give you that price, but you need to be flexible on our terms. 
You know, we can pay you 2.1, but this is how it's going to happen. You're going to get 30% on day one, and you're going to get the rest over seven years. It's what I think roughly what I said to him. He said, oh, no, 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 I don't want that. No, no. I said, so tell me then, what, what, what are you thinking? He said, well, we would want at least 40% or 50, he said something like at least 50% on day one. So I had a notebook like and I'm just staring at it on this Zoom, and I'm like, like that. And they're watching me, just scratching my head for a minute. Oh, I can just about do it. I can give you 40%, but in exchange, I want some off the back end. We ended up settling. We paid 1.8. We paid him a million on day one, or a million and 50 on day one, and then 750 over, over three years. The time between heads and completion was Nine under... Nine months. Yeah. We agreed heads process. in May. Yes. We completed at the end of March. Yeah. Why did that take so long? We just made so many mistakes and problems, no knowledge or experience of construction. We were burning through lenders who were saying, well, why would we lend to you? So that took a long time. The actual deal changed a couple of times, because first we were buying the property, and then we weren't buying the property, and blah, blah, blah. So they ended up pulling it out, so we had to change all the SPA a couple of times, etc. This mistake probably cost us half a million quid. We didn't include the balance sheet at the time that we negotiated the deal on in the heads of terms, because that's what we based our offer on, was the original balance sheet. So, so yeah, so let's just expand on that. Yeah, sorry. So you're agreeing price and terms on the business that you're looking at at that moment that you're agreeing price and terms on. And of course, business performance fluctuates. It improves, it worsens, it doesn't stay the same. This price and these terms are predicated on a business that looks like this. So it's the snapshot, the balance sheet at that moment in time. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, the business performance changes, usually declines, because when a seller is selling, they take the eye off the ball, and of course, business performance declines at that point, and then you're overpaying for the business, especially if there's a nine-month separation yeah, 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 yeah. between heads and completion. Yeah, well, your finance is based on them having X level of assets. What's to stop someone stripping them assets in between you agreeing a deal? And selling, uh, and selling it to you. And then all of a sudden you'll get to completion and you've got nothing you can finance. Because the lender won't go, oh, well, we'll give you money anyway. That, that's not what they say. They're like, well, we'll give you less, which is what ended up happening to us. When buying a business, you need a great lawyer on your team. So why not use mine? His name is John Andrews and his details are on the screen. We, we funded it through invoice financing. That was originally how we were funding it. And obviously that fluctuates month to month. So when we, when we structured everything, we agreed an amount of working capital, and then they'd leave the corporation tax to the point, and then anything, anything cash-wise over, they would receive, because they had some retained profit in the bank account, which we, which we gave them as part of the deal. So what ended up happening was, right towards the back end of the deal, as, as I would have done, they were quickly collecting in the invoices that they hadn't received yet, a day, be day before completion, because the deal was structured like anything over they get. So that was obviously a bit of a nervy time. £420,000 short, like a week before completion, with 90 grand in legals, and I just said to Rob, I said, oh, this is a bit of a problem, isn't it? And um, <laughs> so, uh, another obvious idea that ended up happening was we ended up using the corporation tax to, to fill the hole, because they left about 400 grand in. I almost feel like I wish I wouldn't have it any other way, because if that's the hardest it's going to be and we've come out on top, when it, no, not every deal is going to be like, yeah, they're going to be hard. It's a hard game, everyone's into it, but it's also, it's also very rewarding. Let's give Tim some applause. That's fantastic. Thanks very much, Tim.